Welcome back everybody, my name's Kim, I'm from Inside My Money, and we try and develop tools, resources and courses that will help you be a great money manager. So we're focusing on home bank at the moment, and I've had a question about how to include your savings into your budget for um, home bank. So people trying to save money, obviously you want to try and track that savings, can we put that into home bank? So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to do that and there's a couple of tricks that I've found to make it easier. It is slightly longer to do it the way I'm going to show you but it means you can see the whole transaction on your report otherwise you'll just see a netting off of the transaction and everything looks like it's zero. So we're going to do these parts. First of all I'm going to show you a quick thing that I didn't show you before and that's a bud doing a budget via the table view. So there's this normal way, which you go down the different categories, you click on one, and you put an amount, either a monthly amount in, or different months, different amounts. You can do it a faster way than that. And this is the table view. So this gives you a whole complete picture of your budget in one go. So I can make this bigger. And you can alter various budget amounts doing it this way. So I could go into charitable donations, and I could say $15 a month, or I could take that off and I could put in $50 or whatever it is on different months that I might donate. So that's just a fast way of doing your table, or your budget via a table. It also means that you can see your budgeted savings at the bottom as you go. So you can start to think to yourself, hmm, my monthly average, I should be saving about $3,000 a month, but I'm actually spending closer to $5,000, which means my budgeted savings is a lot lower. So just going to have a look, closer look at where that money's going. So over time, as you get a full 12 months picture of your spending, your monthly average will be bring you a lot closer to the average amount that you should be budgeting each month. Now, I find budgets quite arbitrary because we are just kind of going that looks like a good number to me um, so you you do I mean, you do 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 budgets to give you an idea of what you're spending each month and it does give you a bit of a target but I'm going to have another video which shows you some better ways than just coming up with some numbers that you hope that you're going to kind of stick to so that's that table view now we'll move on and we will put savings into the budget so these people are saving, um, they're saving, let's see, trying to save $400 a month from their everyday account, and they're trying to move that to their house account because they're saving for their first home, and they're putting $300 a month into an emergency fund. So at the moment, this is in there as a transfer. Now, whenever that happens, it goes out of one of accounts, one account, the everyday account, and it goes into the other account. So the two transactions net each other off and show as zero. So you're not seeing that in your statistics report. So if we have a look at the reports, go statistics, for the whole period of time so far, if we go total and we go time, <coughs> which you can have, that's a different view, you can see that you can't see any of their savings because it's just money moving out of one account and into another. So first, let's, first off, we're going to create the transaction. Now at the moment, we actually don't have any categories for savings. So we've got to try and first of all create a category. So what I've tried to do in the past is I've tried to create the category using this way, the parent and the subcategory, but that doesn't seem to take for some reason. So I did some research and found that there's a faster and easier way of doing it. So every time you want to create a new category, do it this way and it will be a lot easier. So we click on transactions and we go add. Now I'm going to add it into the everyday account. So we'll bring up the everyday account and we're going to go transaction, add. Then we're going to create the transaction going out of this account for $400. Just do it for this month. We're a bit behind in, in loading these transactions, but that's okay. We'll do it for the month, which is January. So we're going to create the $400 going out of the everyday account. And we're going to say that is savings. And we're going to go colon emergency fund. Oh, that was actually house fund. House 
fund. So you go savings, full colon, house fund. And by going add, that will automatically, it will add that transaction into the very bottom, but it will also create the category. And so here, if we go up to categories and go down here, you'll see here is our new category for savings, and this is our new subcategory for house fund. Now I'm going to rename this to be house fund out and go OK. And now I'm going to create a new category under savings called house fund in. Now I'll go to my house fund and I'll put in a new transaction and it will be into the income part because it's going to be money coming in. Category, savings, house fund in, and go add, and close. So this account, the house fund's gone up by $400 this month. And the everyday account, I'm going to bring this across, you'll see has gone down by $400. So just transferred money out of one account to another so that they can do some savings. And they would have made that an automatic payment going out on the same day as their salary because you just don't want to have to make a decision on that money. So in the behavioral terms, it is far better for you to create that automatic payment on the day that your money, your salary, or your wages go into your bank account because if you can't see it, you can't spend it. So that's what these guys have done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at our statistics report. And what we should see is if we go by subcategory and go by time, then we should see our savings going in to one and going out of another. And that gives you the detail if you click on the little book down the bottom. And we can do a different graph as well. But what we also want to do now is we want to set a budget. So at least we know we can see both sides of the transaction now. So we can see the money coming in and out. And then we want to go up to manage budget. We could do it in table view, but we'll do it this way. Savings money coming in is going to be 400. And savings money going out is going to be minus 400. And we could force monitor this as well. So if we go click that, then when we click on our look at our budget report, or actually if we have a look at our budget table view, you can see there's little pins. And this says that it's that we have to look at these every time. These are important expenses for us to keep track of so that we can try and manage that money. So we can force monitor that savings and it will give us a little pin. So then we go close and we go our, our um, budget report and we will go on our category or our subcategory. Doesn't seem to give you the ability to drag this down, which is somewhat frustrating, but that's okay. So now we'll look at our house fund savings out and our house fund savings in. Now, keeping in mind this at the moment, this looks odd because you're saying, but hang on a minute, $400 a month times 12 months is not $3,200. You've got to make sure you put in 12 months. Um, and then we're obviously at the 11, we've got 11 months to go. So at the moment, we've got a total budget of $4,800 we're trying to save. So I tend to just ignore the savings, the fund out one, but we want to see that we are hitting budget with our house fund savings in. So 4,800 is our total budget for the year to save into that account. We've already put in 400 for January. So we should only, so now we're down to only having to put in 4,400 um, from now until the end of the year. So that in a nutshell is how you make sure that you have a budget for your savings and then how you can track to see whether that is actually meeting your budget. So just a quick note, when you see what's left, that's the amount that you still have to spend. And when you see here, 
So that's what's left is 4,400 still to save or we're under by 4,400, but that's absolutely fine because we're doing $400 a month for the next 11 months. So we should be okay. If we miss a couple of months, then obviously you'll see that we're, we haven't kept we haven't kept our savings program in place. That's why it's better to do it as an automatic payment so you don't even have to think about it because you shouldn't have to think, have I got enough money left at the end of the month to be able to put into savings? You should be saying, right, I'm, only, I'm going to save $400 a month. I'm going to try and live off the rest. Now, that might take you some time to get there, so don't try and save more than what you can comfortably afford and then you can build on it. So one of the things that we do is that we set the savings amount at a fair amount. So it might be, let's say it's 300. But three months from now, we'll increase that automatic payment to $325. And then we want from six months from now, that automatic payment to go to $350. But we're not waiting until it's three months time to increase it to 325. We're saying today, we're going to set up three APs. One's going to be for $300 a month for the next three months. Then in three, then I want my second AP to be $325 starting three months from now, going another three months. And then I want my third one to be $350 a month starting from June going through till September. It's called pre-commitment and it means that in three months time you're not saying oh goodness can I find an extra $25 a month. You're like well I've already got that in place and you'll forget about it and it will just start coming out of your account and you'll just start saving. So use pre-commitment say today I'm going to set up a commitment to save more over the rest of the year in small doses. Set up your pre-commitment amounts in your online banking and then let them run. And that way, you'll just automatically start living off less. And you'll wonder, wow, that was actually really easy. So give that a go. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, just put them into the comments. If that didn't hit the mark, absolutely tell me and we will we will come up with some other videos and look out for my other videos i'm just about to load a couple up on debt calculators so i'd love some feedback on those calculators so look out for those and we'll catch you again soon